today we shall be also looking into a uh, famous glory that is turned to shame. Please, you need to understand what I am trying to say here. We shall be looking into famous glory that is turned to shame. I pray for you today that your glory will not turn to shame in the name of Jesus. I want you to understand as at the time that Saul was ruling, David has been prepared. You must know this. Saul was famous. David was not. But God has already anointed, asked David to be anointed for the position. Famous glory was the glory of Eli. And also Samuel took over that place. We have heard of so many people have heard about a particular owner of the house, now a tenant in the house of the new landlord. Okay, just give him a little portion of that place. So it is possible for glory to be famous and also be shameful. It's very important. And they start addressing them as the worthy man of yesterday. They start addressing them as the big man of yesterday. They will start in turn addressing them as a man who was doing well yesterday, but today he is no more. Not that that glory is dead. Not that that destiny is hung up or it can, it's, it's in the grave, but there is something that happened. I pray for you today in the name of Jesus. Your glory will not turn to shame in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare by the mighty hands of God, your glory will not turn to shame in the name of Jesus. Everyone under the sound of God to me, I want you to I say my glory will not turn to shame in the name of Jesus. Hosea chapter 10 verse 5 says, The inhabitant of Samaria shall fear because of the cliff of Bethavim, for the people therefore shall mourn over it, and the priests thereof rejoice on it. For the glory therefore, because it is departed. I pray for you today. When the glory is shameful, it means that that glory is already been departed. I declare by God in the name of Jesus, your glory will not be departed. In the name of Jesus, your glory will not be mourned. In the name of Jesus, your glory will not be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, your glory will not be hijacked. In the name of Jesus, your glory will not be destroyed. Everyone under the sound of God to me, in the name of Jesus, say the glory of my children will not turn to shame. In the name of Jesus, the glory of my business will not turn to shame. In the name of Jesus, the glory of my womb will not turn to shame. In the name of Jesus, glory of my marriage will not turn to shame. In the name of Jesus, start declaring by the power of God, my glory will not turn to shame. Our glory will not turn to shame. In the name of Jesus, our destiny glory will not turn to shame. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray a better amen. I want you to understand special thing about God. And I want you to know what God is capable of doing. God is real in mercy. God is mighty in everything that he do. And I want you to know without God in the area of your life, everything go watery. But I want you to understand, God is the only one. Psalm chapter 4 verse 2 says, O ye sons of men, how long will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love vanity and seek after listen? These are the thing and the fact you need to know. And you must understand. When glory is being departed or glory turned to shame, few things will happen. Number one, it will become bad history. Even why is he alive? They will say, can't you see that person? Can't you see that family? A particular boy came on Sunday and uh, the parents were complaining and they, okay, somebody have to brought the boy and I just say, you have future. You are the first son. You are 20 years of age. But I was told you go to view centers and do many things that your parents does not like. I asked him, I said, do you take drugs? He said, no. Okay, do you take, do you take uh, uh, many other things? Are you into gutter water? 
Do you take, uh, what is it called, Caesar? Do you take many of those things? I mentioned the names of those drugs for the boy. And the boy said to me, say, no, sir. I said, tell me the truth. Okay, you take tramadol once in a while. He said, no, sir. I said, tell me the truth. I said, do you take, do you take many of these things? He said, no, sir. I said, okay. I said, that means your parents offend you. He said, yes, sir. That was the reason I was doing what I've been doing. Number one, please, I want every parent to take note of this. And I've said this severally. I said, can you tell me what your parents have done wrong? I said, if they change from this, are you going to change? He said, yes, sir. I said, okay. What are they doing that you don't like? He said, they compare me with people. Don't ever compare your children with other person. That's number one. Don't say, look at that person's children. Look at that, your friend. Look at this. Be careful. Don't ever. That was a problem that was affecting that boy. And I said to him, number two, do you love the church that your parents are going? He said, mm, no, sir. He said, the way the service is here today, I love it. I would love to be coming here. I said, I will speak to your parents so you can join our youth church. Okay, from there, you grow. I said, I will mentor you. So you must understand what this is all about. So it is possible for somebody to be bad history. The parents are already turning that boy to bad history. Comparing him to his friends. Telling him that you can't do well. Look at this one, how this one is doing well. You have to be very, very careful. Every of your children have their strength. They might be twins and they might not be brilliant the same way. They might not be hardworking the same way. They might not be thinking at the same direction. But you are the one to know how to manage. When you want to dispense information concerning your children, you must be careful. Are you following me? You must have what is called wisdom and you work with it. You must not say that because this one is doing where you are this. No. Manage your children. Manage crisis in them. Manage prosperity in them. Manage happiness in them. Manage joy in them. You must understand. I know one of my sons in the Lord is in America now. God so blessed that boy. The mother is joining us again. And also the mother is my daughter. Something happened many years ago. This was a boy that cannot do many things. And hear this. He chose to do a career. Drop everything for that career. Can I tell you now? He didn't go to university here or polytechnic. And maybe he did not even finish the secondary school provincial. He finished it one way or the other. But as I'm telling you right now, he's attending university in the United States of America. This is what God can do. The mother saw that in him. He saw the weakness and turned the weakness to strength. Oh my God. I bless the glory of that woman. My daughter, I know you are connected. I bless your glory. Oh my God, I bless your glory. He saw the weakness in the son. Instead of carrying the children, that, that son up and down, comparing the son with other sons. Instead of saying, what is wrong with you? There are so many children living with her. She was taking care of some children that are not at home. And such one are doing well. And hear this, beloved. He saw strength in the boy. He saw greatness in the boy. She saw strength, she saw greatness in the boy. She saw happiness in the boy. She saw great glory in the boy. And today, as I'm telling you, the boy is waxing strong. Ladies and gentlemen, you will hear very soon that the mother is connected from America. I pray for you today. Power not to waste the destiny and the glory of your children. God gave you only one son, and you overpampered that son. God gave you only one daughter, and you overpampered that daughter. I want to tell you, a child that is a parable in my dialect, a child you did not train will be, you, you will say the out that you are built because you did not build that boy. Any boy, any girl you did not build, any child you did not build, oh my God, how you look at your son or your daughter, this one have a particular uh, a deformation somehow and you throw a threat to that child. I want you to know that there is no how you can gain that child. So I pray for you today, and I pray for your children. In the name of Jesus, their glory will not be destroyed. 
In the name of Jesus, their glory will not be turned to shame. Say the glory of my children, you will not turn to shame. In the name of Jesus, mention their names after the other. Their glory will not turn to shame. In the name of Jesus, their glory will not turn to shame. In the name of Jesus, shout the loudest, amen. Number two, when glory of a man depart, number two things that will happen, he will be living on his past glory. In Yoruba, they call some people low one and people that are rich of yesterday. They be living on their past glory. Nothing again. They be living their past glory. Number three, he will become a shadow of his reserve. Such person will become the shadow of his reserve. Why? When they look at you, say, mm, mm. many years ago, when it used to be where you are not dead. And you are giving the story of when it used to be where. I pray today. If that story is what you have been saying. I declare by God in the name of Jesus. The Lord destroy that story. In the name of Jesus. This topic is anointing for glory restoration. Paraventure your glory has misrode. Paraventure your glory has misfired. Paraventure your glory has gone out of order. That of your husband. That of your marriage. And you are looking for a way to package it. The glory that it cover. I pray today in the name of Jesus. Let there be restoration. 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 In the name of Jesus. Another thing that will come to that person. He will become an object of ridicule and mockery. Hey. Don't let that one come closer to you. Don't let that family come closer. When they come to your house. What happened to them will happen to you. So a lot of people begin to avoid them. Turn to the object of mockery. I pray for you today in the name of Jesus. May you not turn to the object of mockery. In the name of Jesus. May your family not turn to the object of mockery. In the name of Jesus. May your generation not turn to the object of mockery. In the name of Jesus. There are so many people that their life is not working. Nothing good work for them. They are, like, they are living opposite their destiny. I declare today in the name of Jesus. If this is your story, my God will deliver you. In the name of Jesus, my God will deliver you. My God will deliver you. So shall it be in Jesus' name. The next one that will happen, no one will love to associate with him. He will be suspicious of everybody. Ah, there is something this one do wrong. Do you want that thing to affect you? That person will be, they will be suspicious of that person at all times. So there are so many places you're supposed to go. So many places you're supposed to do where? So many places you're supposed to get things right. You just discover that nothing is happening. Nobody is connected. Nobody is speaking. Nobody is saying something great about you. But I pray today in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Almighty God, my God will surprise you. My God will surprise you. My God will surprise you. Surprise you. Hey, Lastly, the life of that person will be the life of sweat and struggle. When glory of a man depart, the man will begin to live in yesterday. And hear this. There are so many ways that the glory of man could be departed. Number one, impatient. Number two, not being able to manage your wealth, your resources. Number three, over excitement. Number four, thinking that you have arrived. Number five, seeking for overnight sources. Number six, inability to know how to manage crisis when it comes. Number seven, having the mind of failure when things seem not working. Number eight, seeing yourself as the worst person or worst thing has ever happened to. Number nine, pretending that all is well when it is not well. Number ten, Inability to pray. Number 11. Forgetting seeking the face of God when it is ripe. Number 12. Seeking air from Egypt. Number 13. Helping people that fall to rise when you are not helping yourself. The last one on this note. Reject advice from right people. Rejecting advice from right people. You must understand this. And you must know how this will work for you. If there is a problem attacking your glory. The Lord will take away that problem. In the name of Jesus. Samson watched 
wanted to rise up to challenge as occasion demand, the way he used to do before. In the book of Judges chapter 16, verses 25 to 31. But he didn't know that his glory has been taken away from him. He was created to kill. Samson was created to destroy. Samson was created to have vigor and right energy. But hear this. Because he was unable to keep vital secrets. And he married from a wrong person where he's not supposed to marry from. And terrible things happened to him. I used to tell singles and the youths, when you want to marry, that is not the time you're supposed to be in a haste. Some people are always be in a haste because of what they want to marry. Everything in their mind, marriage, 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 that has been the issues of their life. This is the time you need to be patient. The time you're supposed to marry is not the time you're supposed to be in haste. Because of what? Marriage is not the way many of you think. Marriage has a lot of input. If you marry to a wrong person, you are at risk. If you marry to a right person, you are happy. If you marry to somebody that is valued destiny, there is a problem. So you must understand that. A son came and is about to marry. Okay, one of my daughters will be engaging in marriage. Okay, the end of this month on the 27th. And the fancy came around. I said, you people are supposed to come for counseling. I just briefed him a bit. I called a few people. I said, have you ever thought of leaving your marriage? He said, several times. I called a woman. The woman said, several times. I called another man. The man said, several times. And he opened his mouth. I said, so. What is keeping them is the counseling they are receiving. I say, you need it. So you must understand. I pray for you today in the name of Jesus. May you not marry a stranger. May you not marry your enemy. If you have married to your enemy, the Lord will turn that person to your friend. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Where is your oil? I need your oil. I want everybody to pray for their oil. Open it right now. And declare the mind of God upon it. Say, hear the power of God. Come upon this oil. In the name of Jesus. This is the oil of glory. And the restoration of glory. In the name of Jesus. As I will apply you on the third day. Let the power of God. Grace of God. Anointing of God. Right of God. Manifest through you in the name of Jesus. Say by this anointing, I will do exploit. By this anointing, I will do excellently. By this anointing, I will do rightly. By this anointing, I will become global figure. By this anointing, sickness will disappear. By this anointing, promotion will come. Start declaring upon it what you want this anointing to do for you. Start declaring, start declaring, start declaring. By this anointing, I see the help of God. By this anointing, I see favor of God. By this anointing, I see right of God. By this anointing, I see God increase. By this anointing, I see God favor. By this anointing, I give God favor in the name of Jesus. By this anointing, I see God right in the name of Jesus. Start declaring, start declaring. So shall it be in Jesus' name we pray. Don't apply it now. It's a restoration, anointing for glory, restoration. This is what God wants to do. I declare concerning you today, as you apply this way on the last day, the third day, I command by God in the name of Jesus, your glory will manifest. In the name of Jesus, your glory will manifest. In the name of Jesus, your glory will manifest. Today, we only treated a topic, famous glory, that turned to shame. So, by tomorrow or next time, we're going to talk about this. We'll be talking how glory can be made thin. How glory can be made thin. That means how glory become irrelevant. How glory become useless. When we talk about glory, there must be a man or a woman. So glory don't operate alone. Glory is a spirit, spiritual 
spiritual illumination that is attached to a person that make that person to be attracted to the place of relevancy and to the place of honor, to the place of right. When we talk about glory, we are talking about greater measure of God that come on man that make that man to manifest. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. God so did this so well that even the unbelievers understand and they enjoy the glory of God. I am to tell you today that in no way your glory has been manipulated. Some people, somebody coming sometimes ago and say, Sir, why are the unbelievers prospering? And I said to them, God promised every sons of Abraham, the children of Abraham are blessed. Listen to this, uh, and listen to this, uh, and the only thing they might be blessed on earth, if they don't do the will of God, they will not make heaven. But here it is, you as a child of God that you believe God, you may be poor because you don't understand the strategies of making wealth. When you are employed into an office, you let to that office. Whereas those that you submit to, they are unbelievers. They mock your Christianity. They mock whatsoever you are doing. And they, make, they mock your glory. Your glory will not be mocked. Amen. In the name of Jesus, it shall be well with you in the name of Jesus. I want to congratulate you and to appreciate God for your life. It shall be well with you. I love you with the love of God in Jesus' name.